So for this video, I want to go ahead and create the internal routes for each of these books. So what I'm going to do is this. We first of all need to transfer this or transform it rather into a link instead of an article. So I'm going to link this and then the href should go into something. And remember that we need to get the dynamic route for each of these links. So we also need to create the dynamic route for it first of all. So what I'm going to do is this. Inside my app folder, the way the routing works in Next.js is that every folder inside the app automatically becomes a route. So I'm going to create a new folder inside here called books. And when I do that and I add in a new file here called page.js and then I just say RFC and then change this into books. If I go ahead and save that, you'll notice that I can now navigate into forward slash books. And it now just shows the books. But the problem with that is that this link is not dynamic in that if I try to navigate to a page like this or a category like this, it is not going to show me that particular category. So Next.js provides a solution for us by doing the following. Instead of having the page.js here, I'm just going to delete it. Inside this books, I'm going to create a new folder. And then in square brackets, I'm going to call it books like so, so the same name. And then inside here, I'm going to create a new file called page.js. Now, if I go ahead and say RFC inside here and then change this into books, then what you'll notice is I can still navigate into forward slash books and we should still see something on the screen, uh, but nothing happens because now this is a 404 page. The reason why it's a 404 page is because the books, which is the original parent, does not have a page.js. But now the way this routing is being interpreted is as follows. We have the home page and then we have the forward slash books and then another forward slash, which is going into a dynamic route. So now this is a dynamic route. Now look at this. If I go ahead and add, so obviously it, it filled it up for me. So if I just go ahead and navigate to that, then we should now see books right there. Meaning, if I go ahead and also navigate into a random route just like that, then I should still see books because now that is the route that we are creating inside here. Now, the interesting thing with Next.js is this. If I can go ahead and destructure params from inside here, and then if I console log params, what we should see in our console is when I save that, look at that, we have books which is our dynamic route. And then it's saying from the parameters that it is getting, it is getting this, which is the random stuff that I typed inside here. Now look at this. If I go ahead and type in some other random stuff and I navigate to it, then look at what is logged in the console as well. The very, very same thing. Now what that means is as follows. If I go back inside my page.js inside here, I can make this into a dynamic route by adding in my curly brackets and then my back ticks and then my dollar sign curly brackets once again. And then I can go ahead and say this, that this is going into the forward slash books, which is this route inside here, and then forward slash and then the dynamic route. So I'm going to say category, category dot. Now, this is going to be coming from the API. The way we can search for a single book in the API is by using its list name encoded. Because look at this, let me just go ahead and let me see if I can find it. Right here, we have hardcover dash fiction. If I go ahead and search for hardcover fiction, it is right here. And then it is inside the list name encoded. So we search for the list name encoded and then append dot JSON to the end of it so that we can get books concerning that particular category. So this is the endpoint that we're going to be hitting in the API. That therefore means that we can do the following. If I jump back inside here, I can say category dot list underscore name underscore encoded. And then now when I save this, if I go back to our application and then go back and then go back and then go back again and then go back again, we are back in our homepage and it says link is not defined. Oops, 
control space bar and then hit enter which is going to automatically import it for you now if i save that again then this error should go away and then when it does now look at the bottom left okay when i hover over this it now shows me the link that when i click it's going to navigate to so this one is navigated into combined print and ebook fiction and then this one is the same and then this one and then this one see that meaning now if i go ahead and click on hardcover fiction it navigates into forward slash books oops it navigates into forward slash books forward slash hardcover fiction if i go ahead into another category such as this one then look at this it goes into that particular category now look at what happens in the console i navigated to this one first and then to this one and it is also logged because we are logging it to the console right here well that means therefore that i can go ahead and get the api the api endpoint sorry which should be this one right here so let me copy that and then paste it here so that i don't forget and then if i just go ahead and copy let me copy this copy that and then paste it inside here and then change this into get books and then if i go ahead and now change this route from copy this and then you can remove the console log so i'm going to change this route from forward slash lists to forward slash this so up to here and then paste that in remove this double forward slash so now what should happen here is this one is only searching for hardcover fiction so i don't want that so i'm going to substitute this and let it search for params dot let me see params dot books because we want to get this see how this is an object so we can use dot notation to get the books so params dot books and then now let's see so we need to call this function so i'm going to say const books is equal to await get books and see how we're getting an error here it's because await cannot be used with a function that is not asynchronous so we need to transform this into an asynchronous component like so uh, or an asynchronous function and then when i save that then we should not get an error so we still get books fantastic and then now look at this we can now begin to build out our application so inside here i want to return a div with a class name of padding x of 2 and a padding y of 20 and then i'm going to say this should be a container so container with an mx of auto and then inside here let's go ahead and say console log books so that we can see what we get back so if i console log that we get back a huge result but let me just zoom out a bit let me zoom out so that i can show you that we we should be getting where is it we are getting the object right here but then results is also an object and then now books is inside the result so this is the one that we want so what we need to do therefore is the following let me zoom back in what we need to do is we need to go ahead and say inside this div i'm going to create another div and then i'm going to say books dot results so that we can go inside the results and then the results object has books array inside and then inside here i can say dot map and then for every book that i get back like i can go ahead and render an article with the key of let me just go ahead and let's see can i open this in a new page hardcover fiction this one oops invalid api key let's just copy it from here paste it here and we should see the books so there we go so that we we don't keep on zooming out in our console every time so we are inside here so dot books and then we need to go ahead and say i want to get the book image first of all and then once i get the book image i need to get the author the title the author and the description so inside here inside the key i need to get the book dot let's see what can be used as a key inside here the key inside here can be can even be the book image because the book image is only linking to one particular book but i think i'm going to use the description instead 
so book dot description and then once we have that let's go ahead and render out our image and the source for this image is going to be book dot book underscore image because i saw it right here book underscore image and then we're going to give this a width of i can't remember what, what i used but uh, anyway there's no problem i'm going to give it a width of let's say 400 and a height of 600 and then a class name here is equal to width dash full so that it takes up the entire width of its container of the article and then object dash cover and then when i save this we're going to have an error on the screen which is going to say something like da 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 is not defined okay not this one let's just fix that error quickly so it's going to say something like cannot fetch or something is not defined in our next config file there you go so it says this image cannot be found because da da, -da is not configured in our next config file so what we need to do is inside our next config.mjs inside our next config here we're going to say that we want to allow images with the remote patterns that are as follows we're going to say that the host name is going to be what was it storage dot let me say storage dot google api dot com paste it inside here and then we're going to allow a protocol here protocol to https like so so when i save that next just should automatically reload this so that we don't have to do it ourselves and then when i take a look at this then reload it so that it fixes everything reloading still reloading okay there we go so you can see that now we get our images so that is looking quite ugly but it's working so it's okay now once we have this then let's go ahead and just tell this out so inside this div, I'm going to give it a class name of grid and a gap of four. And then for medium screens, I'm going to say grid columns two. And then for large screens, I'm going to say grid columns three. So save that and it's going to say one, two, three. And you know what? I think I had four grids perhaps. So let me say that for extra large screens, then the grid columns are going to be four. So we have one, two, three, four. There we go. And then let's tell out the article. I'm going to give this a class name. And I'm going to say border and border dash neutral dash 800 and then rounded dash large. And then on hover, I want the BG to be neutral dash 900. Save that and there we go. Okay, now let's go ahead and add the title of the images. And you'll notice that right on top, the images are not rounded. So let's fix that first of all. So I'm going to say that rounded dash top dash large for the images and then below the image i'm going to have an h2 that says book dot title which should now render the title of the book right there let's go ahead and style it out and then see how this the title is to the edge i don't want that to happen so i'm going to grab this h2 place it inside a div so that i can go inside this div and give it a class name of padding all round of four which is going to push it inwards like so and then on the h2 we're going to have a class name that says font bold and then let's see font bold I, I think it's just font bold yeah i think it's just font bold and then below the h2 but still inside the div i'm going to have a paragraph that says book dot description so book dot description save that and you start the description right there let's style it out give it a class name and I'm going to say text neutral dash 400 text small and leading six to increase the line height like so. Okay. Now for the H2 and the paragraph, I want to go inside the div and give it a class of space dash y dash four, which is going to separate out the elements inside by adding a margin on the top and bottom of the elements so that I don't have to add margins manually. And then let's see let's see let's see what else did i have in in the demo i can't remember but that's okay so we need the author yeah we need the author so below this below the h2 actually then we'll go ahead and say buy and then book dot author so and you should now see the author right there let's style out this give it a class name 
and then I'm going to say text text neutral 400 text small like so and then once we do that I've just remember that not all books have a description so for the ones that don't have a description let me try to see if I can go ahead and get that error let's see I think this one doesn't have descriptions okay so there are, there are some that don't have a descriptions but I thought it would give me an error saying that it doesn't have a description so I guess that this is okay but if you want to be on the safe side what you can do is you can go ahead and add a check and say that when book.description is true then you want to render the paragraph and if it false then you just want to render null so that you can just add a bit of error boundary and so once we have that then let's go ahead and add the price now the prices that are in the API, they all say that the price is zero, zero. But if you visit the links, then the prices are not set to zero. So I don't want to add the price because it might seem like, you know, like if you deploy this application and then someone visits, visits it and then sees the price to be zero and then wants to buy it, but then gets the price to be something different. I mean, I mean, it just, comes off a little uh, untrustworthy you know so I, I don't want to add the price for this one but what I'm going to do is I want to go ahead and add the buy links so below this uh, not below this div actually still within this div I'm going to create another div with an h3 that says buy now buy now and then below this h3 I'm going to have a ul and then inside this ul i'm going to say books or was it book it's book dot buy underscore links dot map and then remember that buy links is also an array that's why i'm using map and then for every link that i get back i also want to get back the index of the link and then i'm going to say this i'm going to say that the list item is going to be an anchor tag and the href for this is going into link that should be it link.url sorry and then the text is going to say link.name like so save that and then give this list item a key of index so that when i save that then we should be able to see there we go so buy now and then you can buy from all these five items right there so let's go ahead and style it out inside the h3 give it a class name of font dash semi bold and I give it a margin bottom of two to separate it out from this part and then for the ul's I'm going to give this a class name of flex and flex wrap and then items that center and justify start so that now they're going to be styled as follows and then let's go ahead and style out the anchor tags so give this a class name and I'm going to say class name here is going to be BG neutral dash 900. Um, that may be a problem because when I hover over this, then this is also 900. So let me say, let me reduce the hover on the article. So on hover, this should be 950. So that when I hover over it, it's a bit lighter and we can still see the background on the anchor tags. So inside here, BG neutral 900, and then on hover, then the BG neutral 800, and then add a transition, and then give it a padding Y of three, and then let me say padding Y of two, padding X four, and then rounded dash large, save that, and then we have that, and then let's give it a gap on the UL. So give it a gap of four, which is going to separate out like so. Uh, let's say gap of six. There we go. So we have a gap of six. And then on the H3, let's have a margin bottom of four to push it downwards just a bit right. Did it? Oh, sorry, we need to remove one. There we go. Fantastic. And would you look at that? So we have the books and probably I should increase this spacing a bit. I think it's a bit too small. So the spacing is right here. So let me say that for large screens, then the gap should be eight. Just to increase it massively. Yeah, I think let's let's work with that. So would you look at that now? Let's add our title on top. 
before we finish this project so an h1 here is going to say and let me remove this console log as well so the h1 here should say params dot um what am i thinking about it's not params it should be it should be coming from the api somewhere let me just check it should be it should be this one and you know what? not even the list name it should be the display name the display name so we need to go into results and results is is an object so we don't need to map over it so the books dot results dot display name that should be the one so books dot results dot display display underscore name and then let's go back into our original page so that we can copy classes of the h1 that we don't have to type all that again so copy and then paste them inside here save that and we should have our there we go there we go so if i go back if i go into a random category here then we should see espionage and there we go so we get books about that fantastic now something that i did not do is that i didn't add a back button so let's add a back button here just to improve the user experience so right on top i'm going to add a link here from next link and i'm going to say uh, ampersand l a r r so left arrow and then say go back and then this link is going to be linking to the forward slash page because that is our home page so go back and then save that and it should appear somewhere there so go back and then I, the, one, the way I want to style this is just like the way I've styled the anchor tag. So let me copy this so that we don't have to type it again. So paste it inside here. Save that. And we should have our anchor tag right there. So go back. It goes back to the original page. And then before we finish, I want to go ahead and change this title. And then I want to format the dates. So let's change the title first. So inside our layout, I'm going to go ahead and change the title to book finder up using next js 14 the ny times api and tailwind css and then copy this and paste it inside for the description as well and that is going to update the title and then now for the dates what we're going to do is we're going to install a package that is called date fns so npm install date dash fns and then as that installs what we need to do is inside our home page we need to go ahead and import import format from date dash fns forward slash format and then the way we use it is inside our dates right here i'm going to cut this out and then i'm going to say format and then pass in new date and then inside the new date i'm going to pass in the date that i want to be formatted and then outside of the first bracket, I'm going to place a comma and then a string here and say I'm going to format it in the form of D D O and then space and then month capital M four times and then year small y like so. And then I'm going to do the same thing for this one. So format and then new date, pass in the date and then format in the form of D O month and then year. Save that and then we should this should be formatted like so fantastic would you look at that looking nice quite a nice application so if i click on this one then it takes us into the internal page about the books fantastic so let's go ahead and commit this to github and then i think i also want to deploy this to vercel i think i will do that so let's open up github and then let's also open up vercel close this close this close this and we can close this one as well so inside the repositories let's create a new repository so new repository come on loading please okay loading 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 So let me create a new repository here. Let me call it next JS books finder. And then 
or rather let me call it book finder instead of books finder then create repository and then creating creating let's copy this link let's go back inside here let me zoom out and then let me shut down the server we don't have any errors that's always good now let me go ahead and do this let's say git add package star git commit and i'm going to say install date dash fns and then git add dot prettier rc git commit dash m prettier config for tailwind css and then git add next dot config dot mjs git commit dash m and i'm going to say what did we change we, we added google apis so add path name to allow images and then let's cd into our app folder and then let me say git add layout yes git commit update title and description and then git add page chairs git commit and i'm going to say show book categories on home page then git add books and git commit i'm going to say dynamic route for books and then git remote add origin and then paste in the link that we copied and then git branch dash capital m main to change it to the main branch and then git push dash u origin main which is going to push it to github and as that is pushing let's log into vercel okay i'm already i'm already logged in so let's say add new here and then add new project and then inside here it should now appear as the first one so import this project and then as it is importing let it import we can reload this so that we see that we have our project right there fantastic and then next yes books finder let me call it tsb sankara so that i remember how it is called and then we don't have also oh we have env variables we have an environment variable so what you need to do is just simply go ahead and copy this and then paste it inside here just paste it in the first uh what's it called in the first input and it is automatically going to format it for you as you can see right there so we need the env variables otherwise our application is going to break and in this build settings we don't need to change anything inside there so let's go ahead and say deploy and then let's wait for a moment as that is deploying and there we go so our application is now deployed so we can say continue to dashboard and then we can visit it from right here so visit and there we go so there is our application on the internet that i can share out with my friends so you can go ahead and test it out just to make sure that you don't have any bugs and you can see that it is working correctly and it looks quite quite nice if i do say so myself so that is going to be the end of this video i hope you enjoyed it i hope you learned something new and if you did then please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're not already it really helps me out and my new target is to reach 10,000 subscribers hopefully by the end of this year i hope that you can help me out on this journey and i will see you in the next one